Hello, friends, and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz, and I am closing out Christmas in July with one goofy <laughs> light up card. I am pulling some of my favorite supplies from last season, so let's take a quick look at the card. Here it is. She's a little bit chunky. She's a five by seven, and we have this twinkle light gnome in a mug, reindeer antlers. I cannot get over this guy. One of my favorite features is that I have glittered some acetate to pop up that mug so you can really see the lights shine behind it. So let me show you what I'm using. First, I have the very cute layered mug, okay? So I just pulled the mug pieces, the handle, and then the front of it. And this is the springtime gnome, and it's got all kinds of decorations for spring, but he's super cute for all seasons. This is the Freezen Season mug add-on that I pulled the antlers from. There's also a cat and a dog if you haven't seen the mugs. Oh my goodness. And I'm even going to do the inside of the card. These are the Insider Sentiments Christmas. And there are some sweet and slightly sassy, wonderful things in there. Finally, we have Merry and Bright. It's a very small die set. It says Merry and Bright. And then it has some little twinkling things. And we're going to pair all that with some twinkle lights from Pear Blossom Press. So if I'm gonna make a project like this, I go all out. I decided to do a little bit of ink blending on these pieces, but you could totally skip this, right? The lights and the acetate are really kind of the showstoppers here. So no one's gonna notice if you skip the ink blending. I'm coming in just a little bit on either side of the hat to darken that up. And then a little bit at the base of the antlers. This is the brim of that hat. There's another piece you can put on the hat that's maybe a buckle. Uh, I skipped it. Here's my mug. I'm going to add a little dimension to the mug. And this is where my blending buddies are my best friend. I just feel like I have more control holding a blending brush this way instead of sort of your standard long handled brush. And I'm coming in very gently from the sides. I know that this ink color is kind of a powerhouse. It's a lot darker than the cardstock, but I can go very gently and get that nice rounded look. For the handle, I'm coming in at the top and bottom where it attaches to the mug and then just a little bit in the middle, those places where we might have a shadow. And those are gonna layer right on top of the base mug, the whole piece. This is cut from the same color of cardstock and I don't want the light pieces showing around the outside. So I am not taking a lot of care with this piece. I'm just coming in on the edges and going full purple here, right? the full power of that ink color. And then you'll see when we start to stack this up, the darkest parts of the mug are around the edges and then on the inside of the mug. I'm also gonna blend a background. This is a five by seven panel. We got a lot to cover here. And I know that I need to be careful with my inks. I want this really soft blend at the top of this orchid color. Um, so I started at the bottom just to kind of test the potency of my ink. I knew I was gonna cover up the bottom with a lot of darker colors. And so I get kind of practice blending at the bottom and then I'll move up towards the top. I take my time with this. So I've sped this up quite a bit so that we're not watching ink blending all day. Um, but I have moved from that sort of pinky purple that we also used on the mug now into some bluish purples, right? I'm trying to create that sort of like midnight, sunset, moody sky. You could probably use this background for Halloween too, um, but I love it. So I actually have two different bluish purples that I use here. I go from a lighter one to a darker one, and then I want the very darkest color at the bottom. I started with chip sapphire, but it wasn't dark enough. So this is a specialty ink. This is a black shimmer pigment ink from Delicata, and this this made me so happy. So the bottom is the darkest and it's got that extra shine. It's pretty subtle, right? We're going to do lights and glitter. And so I don't need to like shimmer ink the entire background, but we do need to add some more sparkle, right? It's merry and bright. So I'm bringing in some metallic watercolor. Mostly I'm using the white, sort of a pearly white, but I will bring in just one shade of gold that is the palest, palest shade. I didn't want to bring in heavy gold, right? That's not really the color scheme that we're using in the rest of the card. And then I will set this guy aside to dry. Look at all that shine. While that's drying, we can begin assembling our gnome. So here's the hat, and I'm just going to add a little bit of glue 
right along the brim. Then when we go to work on the gnome face, there are actually two pieces for that one. So one, you can see there's like the white beard at the bottom. And then I just used an alcohol marker for the skin tone because I don't have skin tone colored cardstock. There's another piece of the beard that you would layer on top of that, but I'm skipping it because the whole beard is hidden behind our mug. And in fact, he's gonna get a little bit of a haircut <laughs> just to cut down on the bulk a little bit to make it fit better. And I'm tucking this down in there so that brim of the hat is just over the edges of the mug. Then I'll stick my glue bottle in there and adhere him to the front of the mug. And I can pop up his nose with just a little bit of foam. So we just get the hat, the edges of the hat, and then his giant nose like peeking over the side of the mug. You guys, I want to do this for every season. No in a mug, it's going to be a thing. So here's the merry and bright. And I cut out the shadow and the word together to get these outlines. And then the ampersand, I'm just going to tuck right in the middle. I tell you what, I fiddled with how I wanted them on there for longer than I want to admit. But once I get them on there, I'm going to tape the mug to my work surface so I can pick these up with a sticky mat, right? This is just like a low tack mat for, I don't know, maybe a cricket or a silhouette or something. And I press that down and I'm putting it on the corner of my grid. So when I add that glue, all I have to do is place it right back down in that exact same corner. And I'll know that my pieces are going right back down in the same place where I had them before. I am going to tap off the back just with a piece of scrap from a trash can um, to make sure that glue doesn't ooze out and create a big mess. I will say this is a newer piece of my sticky mat. I just cut them into like smaller sections. So I left that on there for a few minutes, cleaned up some of the paint and things I've been working with so that it's really good and stuck on there before I go peeling it up. Here I have the word Mary and it stayed in the die, right? That's the dream. I have some rip and stick sheet on the back. I was able to peel off that backer paper and then I am just placing the die directly over my outline. I'll use my pokey tool and I'll push all of those letters right into place. It's the easiest paper piecing ever, ever, right? Then rip and stick sheet again behind the bright. The I, G, H, T all come out as a single piece. And so I'm just trying to be really delicate. They are thin letters to make sure it doesn't stick to my fingers and then tear, but I'm placing that right down in there pretty easily. And I'll finish off the other letters as well. I'm using like a white glitter cardstock for this. And you know I'm stingy, right? The tiniest little piece of rip and stick, the tiniest little piece of white glitter cardstock, but it's so worth it. A little more shine on our merry and bright. I saved the insides of the letters. I wasn't sure if I was going to use them, uh, but I did like this look better where we have the inside that dark purple too. There aren't a lot of them, a little glue on the inside, and I'll just pick them up with the wax end of my pickup stick and we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and add this front of the mug on there with some glue and I'm going to wait on the antlers. I wasn't sure about a few things with the antlers. So we'll just set that aside for now. But look at how cute it is. It's so cute. All right, I have a piece of heavyweight acetate and this Krylon glitter spray that's been in my stash for an eternity, but uh, you can get it all kinds of places. Any hardware store should have it. I sprayed it outside onto this piece of four by six acetate, and then I picked it up before it was really dry. So I have a fingerprint in the middle, but it's gonna be fine, we're covering it up. And I am lining up my mug so he's sort of towards the bottom. And then I want the antlers going as far out to the sides as they can, but still fitting on that acetate. You want a heavyweight acetate for this, right? Because we're popping it up and not every piece of it is secured to the card base. So I like graphics shrink film, right? It's like shrinky dink film, but I'm not heat embossing on it. So it doesn't matter that if it gets really hot, it shrinks up. There are lots and lots of other brands of heavyweight acetate, but this one is crystal clear and more affordable than some. So I went with that one. Then I'm adding this on here with some glue. It looks like a lot, but I'm actually pressing the tip of my glue bottle flat to my cardstock. So it just is sort of smearing the thinnest little layer and it's not going to ooze out. 
I put some sticky notes at the bottom and the side so I would remember where to set him back down. Um, I used my bigger ones instead of my sticky mat because I wanted to make sure the glitter wasn't going to come off of the acetate. I don't think it would have, but I wasn't messing around with it. Then I have five different shapes of these twinkling pieces, stars maybe, ornaments maybe, that are in that merry and bright die set. So I had to use them. Some of these I think I cut last fall. So I have some with rip and stick sheet behind them and that was a way easier and some I'm gonna add using glue, but I like to use the pieces I already have cut if I can. I hadn't glued the antlers all the way down. I wasn't sure if I was gonna need to like poke a hole in something. When I went to add my twinkle lights, I didn't necessarily know how this was gonna work yet, uh, but here I've decided we're gonna go big and try to make the whole mug kind of light up. So I added a little bit of glue under the antlers and then I'll start adding my little stars on there. Behind the tops of the antlers, I put the glue on there, but I haven't really pressed them down yet. I don't want that glue to ooze out. I'll just give it a minute, two minutes while I'm doing other work here. And then when that glue has a chance to get really tacky, then I'll press down and I'll have less of a mess than I would if I had tried to press them immediately. A little bit of glue on the back I find is easiest with acetate if I use my tweezers because I don't want to be moving things around and smearing glue on the background. I'll tap it off on the back of my hand just to make sure there isn't an excess of glue. And now we can start adding him to this beautiful panel. I love how that turned out. I know I want him centered on there and I'm going to hide this twinkle light behind there. It's like an easy light, except that the lights blink on and off. So I just add my battery and push the button. That is it. That's it. I love these so much. I got my first twinkle lights a month ago, two months ago. I'm obsessed. Think about all the things you can do with Christmas trees and the things that you can do with Halloween. I mean, seriously. Next, I'm planning my light placement. And normally I would just use a pencil and mark on the background where I want those lights to be but I have learned my lesson from previous cards. I have ink splattered all over the background and it's sometimes really hard to tell the difference between my pencil mark and a splatter mark. So I'm using these little removable stickers, but you could use a piece of tape or a piece of sticky note. This is just what I had. Then I'm taking my lights and I'm making sure that the light is facing up. You can kind of tell there's a front and a back. If you can't tell, just hold it against your paper and press the button and you'll be able to see if it's shining the right direction. I'm putting these down with the smallest little pieces of tape because I wasn't sure of the placement yet, but normally I would just like tape it down, big old piece of tape, good to go, especially if it's on the back of the panel and the light is gonna shine through. I want one behind the hat, one on the left of the mug, and one towards the bottom right of the mug. Then I'm gonna curl these very gently around and I have a separate sticker that's for the B of bright, and that's where I wanna push my button. For now, I'm taping it down with some temporary tape, but I'll add stronger adhesive later. I just wanna make sure everything's in the right place first. There is a stamp set called Paper Crafting Magic where you could stamp press right over top of that button, but I'll just leave a note in the card that says press the B of bright. As I'm working, I am constantly testing things, so I'm just trying to center the acetate and push the button and see if things look good. I've added some rip and stick quarter inch tape behind my battery pack and you guys, I just taped it right down on top of the panel, the sticker, some of those wires. It's good to go. And we're gonna put a bunch of foam tape back there too. I'm adding a few more pieces of scotch tape just to make sure those wires are secured. I don't want them popping out from behind there. And then I'll press the button and kind of figure out where my lights are and I'm gonna start adding the world's best foam tape. This stuff is amazing, it really, really is. It is repositionable for the first 30 minutes and I'm gonna do this the hard way. <laughs> I'm gonna try to guess where this is gonna fit behind my mug. But my other option would have been to add the lights, the battery pack, the foam to the mug. So I made sure that I knew exactly where my foam tape could go. You can see on the bottom right here, I have some foam tape that was peeking out from behind the mug and I can just pull that right up. It didn't harm my background. It was so easy. And then I just have a lot of flexibility to get foam exactly where I want it. 
I did add a few pieces behind the antlers, tiny little pieces, and then on the handle of the mug. And this backing paper is a dream. It comes off perfectly, so easy to peel up. And I'll just lay everything on top of each other. There's so much less stress here, right? It's got lights in it. I've done tons of details to the rest of the card. And this foam tape, I am i know I'm gushing, friends. <laughs> it just makes it so much easier because I know if I get it wrong, I can just pick it up and move it. So next, we're going to stamp the inside of our card with the Insider Sentiments Christmas. And this one says, hope your holiday season is fun, festive, and full of sparkle, which I thought was very fitting with our light up card. But there's so many wonderful options here. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Not even Santa could bring a better friend. I love it. Here's my five by seven card base. I just flipped it back on itself so I could stamp on the inside. And then all I have to do is add my panel to my card. My friends, I hope that you will try a light up card. I hope that you will put this gnome absolutely everywhere and start thinking about him for Christmas because he's so stinking cute. And I, I don't know, I know we're sort of divided team gnome, team no gnome. Let me know in the comments which team you're on and let me know if you've ever made a light up card. I want to know what you made. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends, and I will see you next time.